All right. So we've got the first components of our head. And you see very quickly how this is going to be a lot more than five references, right? Even for the head, I've got one, two, three, four different references, and one of them is internally composited, separating the upper mandible from the lower mandible to get the shape I want. So I'm using the river otter's eye, but really nothing else. I'm using the wolverine's cranium. So let's tweak that to transition. And I'm using the otter's fur as a transition between the wolf's fur and the wolverine's fur. So I'm using an eraser that's 100% opacity. I'm going to go not to 0% hardness because these spaces are kind of small. Yeah, and I do need some of that. So I'm seeing kind of what's necessary, but I'm going to get rid of those hard edges. I don't ever want it to look cut out, especially with something like fur. But I'm not going to try to match the lighting or the coloring yet with direct adjustments. I'm just trying to get the placement right. Okay, so now it's about the Wolverine. And I'm going to transform, right click, and warp, and kind of push that same bisecting line. You know, getting that to work. I'm not trying to make a wolf. I'm trying to make a believable silhouette that works for my creature. And my creature has this big, round, kind of oval cranium. And so that position works a little bit better. I might even decide I want to drop it a little bit. So I'm going to warp it and pull it on this side so I have more to transition in the jaw there. Yeah, that's looking looking believable. So some big changes can be made. Now I'm going to use my eraser and I'm not trying to do fine erasing, but I know I don't want this top edge to be a hard edge. And I don't want these to actually be the ears, but I can use this as kind of transition fur. As I get into the ears, I actually want to use. So now, speaking of the ears, I'm going to turn off the lower jaw right now, or I can even internally composite it and just separate it. So this is the jaw I'm using and the fur on the neck. I'm going to put that command J in its own layer, and then I'm going to cut it out of the rest. So that I've isolated that white wolf's head. Now I can play with this fur as a transition if I need it. I might need a little bit of it, but I don't need that much. And now the fox ears, I'm going to start bringing that above. And erasing out around those. And then see what I need to do in terms of transforming those to fit in the right places. And I like a little bit of that orange fur. A lot of different colors going on. Sometimes creatures look pretty cool without a lower jaw. <laughs> but I've got my lower jaw. So now with those fox ears, I'm going to do Command T, and I'm going to fit them in place. So there's a lot more kind of fine-tuned warping and distorting and scaling to customize your creature, to make it a fully unique and individual design. 
And if it looks believable, then it's also going to look kind of by definition familiar in some way, which is an interesting dynamic. All right. So now I'm going to erase away from, let's go 0% hardness now because these colors are pretty close. From the Wolverine, let's make that brush even bigger at 100% opacity. And now I can start blending. So we want to do the internal blending. Not worried so much about the outside edges yet. I'm going to leave that pretty rough. So to internally blend, I'm going to start taking my, my uh, opacity down on this eraser. Just like when I'm blending the sky color or something else. You can always do Command Z. Take it back different steps. Now I have one layer transitioning into the next layer. You can shortcut by hitting Command, and it will take you back to the Move tool, which I have on Auto Select, which will select other layers for me to start blending and erasing from at this low opacity. I'm at 55%. And start transitioning. And blending uh, one fur texture into another fur texture is pretty pretty forgiving, but you can also do this going from something like uh, scales of a lizard or a Komodo dragon and you can blend that with feathers, with fur, with other things. So it's really this otter layer that I can get rid of a lot of. All I, I need it right there. But otherwise, it just kind of works as a shadow for me. Yeah, I like that. OK, now there's the problem with this layer. It's getting in the way of the mandible. So you have to kind of use with what, what's believable. And I'm going to transition that very carefully because the white fur is very different than the darker fur I have there. And I'm going to go to a smaller brush at a fuller opacity, still soft edged, and get rid of this hard edge so I can start constructing a body for this head to connect to. Okay, so I'm leaving a lot of it, if there's things that are distracting, like this extra nose over here from that fox layer, I can go ahead and delete that at 100%. And get, whoops, don't want to accidentally move things. So I'm just deleting some of the things that are distracting from seeing the shape, but I'm not getting a, a clean cutout yet. Because I can do that at the end more effectively. So don't obsess with finishing things before everything's put together. But the internal edges, it is good to, to blend and mix. So like this blue has no place here. I can get rid of the hard edge on that ear because I need the, the neck to come through. Okay. I can blend this in. All of these different, look at all the layers I have already just to make the head. Okay, so how do we organize that? I haven't worked on the colors. I haven't done much except place everything. And it all looks believable the way I want at the angle I want. So now I'm going to take all of those head layers 
select them all holding shift, click on the little folder icon within the layer window. That's going to put them into a group and I'm going to label that group. So that's like building the engine. And notice how it's bigger. Whoops. So now I want to uncheck auto select layer. So just when I hit the group, it's going to select the whole thing. Notice how it's a little bit bigger than I need. It's always better to scale it down than to have to scale things up to fit. Okay, now that I've got that, I'm going to put that off in the corner. It's a good time to save. I've got my head put together. It's like roughly welded together. The engine is roughly welded together. It's not polished. It's not painted. But it's internally, it's, it's secure. Okay, now I need a spine and a rib cage and what I call the chassis. And I think a pretty strong one is from this Wolverine reference because I can see the chest really clearly there and the way the collarbone and the shoulders work at roughly the right angle, especially if I tilt it. It doesn't mean I'm using those arms. I'm using the shoulder joint and the rib cage and maybe the first part of the spine. And I'm going to go ahead and make that a little bit bigger using Command T. And I can even just take its opacity down while it's a smart object, just to kind of map it over my sketch and get those joints where I want them. So you see how I'm lining up, because this is an incredibly important part. I'm lining up the shoulder joints with the shoulder joints in my sketch. Now I'm going to use my lasso and I'm going to roughly cut with a lot of overlap. the full rib cage going into the waist. This is the chassis. I'm going to put it back at 100% opacity and then Command J, duplicate that selection, delete the smart object. All right. Now, what connects to this? So I'm going to move that off to the side. I need hips. I'm going to continue the spine. Hips that, that fit kind of the intention. So I have these hips here. They're a little, I can flip it. I can right click within the transform box. This is still while it's a smart object. You can even move it down underneath. Push it in. Yeah, no, those hips, that might actually work. I was skeptical. Okay, so let's grab that. Even though this is a really kind of fluffy wolf. I want to grab those back hips, the back legs, and a lot of overlap into the front legs. It's actually a pretty good leg reference. Not too shabby. Duplicate that. Delete the smart object. Now it's about putting these two things together. And to do that, I need to erase with 100% opacity from the Wolverine layer so I can figure out where this spine is going to connect. So you always erase from what's on top. And I, I start by getting rid with 100% soft edged eraser. Big, but not too big around 300 pixels, I get rid of that hard edge. And it shows me how I need to adjust this wolf reference. What I need to do is 
warp it a little bit to line up those that shoulder joint. So Command T, right click.